Joining me on the line, as he does every Friday on the show, he's from CinemaBlend.com, and you can find him on social media at Mr. Controversy 83 Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Reyes. Uh, Hello. Uh, when my, when my voice is kind of messed up, I can go really low sometimes. So here we are talking about movies, just me and you. Yeah, men with deep voices talking on the radio about films, movies, cinema. I'm Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Andy Dufresne. <laughs> I was trying to practice a Morgan Freeman the other get day. Get busy dying. What's that? Get busy living or get busy dying. I've been trying to do more impressions lately. And I was working, I, I watched a video about someone talking about how to do a Morgan Freeman in, impersonation. It's actually pretty fascinating, but that's not why we're here this week. Um, movie wise, what are, we, what are we looking at this weekend, Mike Reyes? We're looking at another week where I didn't get anything to watch. And all right, Mike it, Reyes it, from CinemaBlood.com, everybody. Well, you know, no movies to talk about this week. You know, nobody's releasing anything. You know, nobody's coming out though this week, right? Well, wait, who? Nobody? Who? Is that like, the movie? If nobody's coming out, then how are the. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. I, I, I thought you were doing a, are, who's on first. Oh, I was. No, okay. I totally was. Okay. Yeah. You're very funny. Very funny. funny stuff here. I'm surprised you didn't get a pass to a movie because of that. Who's on first is still one of the best jokes ever told. But it yeah, is. nobody nobody comes out this week. And, you know, it's uh, from the director of Hardcore Henry with, uh, I think, one of, if not, uh, I think a writer or producer of John Wick is involved with this, which... The way it looks, obviously, it's it's going to have John Wick people, and it's uh, Bob Odenkirk kicking all sorts of ass to uh, in a life that he once led as a uh, a fixer for the underground, the criminal underworld. This kind of seems like you. I said it was kind of look kind of like a modern day falling down. Mm -hmm. You said it more John Wick, which the more I think about, yeah, I get that. But, but the, couldn't we use a modern falling down? Yeah, we could. No, that's a great movie and a highly underrated movie. People seem to, real quick with falling down. People either love or hate that movie. I've never oh, yeah. heard. I've never heard anybody go. It's okay. Yeah, and it really depends on how you take that message. Like, if you just take it as like a face value message and kind of ignore the fact that, oh wow, here's the history of this guy, so it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's like, oh, it, like it, that's just people looking at it face value, and it's like. Oh man, it's just this guy doing horrible things and and getting involved with horrible characters, and we're supposed to like sympathize with him. And it's like, but are we? Anyways, back to nobody. Uh, here's my take on it, and I haven't seen it yet, and I don't know what people are saying about it. I kind of feel like the more I look at it, like the trailer's cool, but it's kind of like buying John Wick off Wish. See, I can't. I, I wouldn't say that because of the fact that it's some of the people that were instrumental to John Wick have helped bring this one in but also it's it starts with the same general kernel like someone's left this life a long time ago yeah but it's also added in the element of this guy had the family and has had quiet life and has become like milk post like and plus it's bob odenkirk doing it i'm just watching that trailer with him in it i i am very excited to see this movie which i have not seen yet it looks cool, but what are you hearing about it? Are people saying it's good or? I've heard overwhelmingly positive things, but there's a couple people, uh, one, our on-staff reviewer for the film, uh, Eric Eisenberg, was not as thrilled with it as, as most others were. I could probably see that because, like, I like the John Wick movies. Don't get me wrong. I like them. But I think we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. They're not very memorable. Like, I don't know if you if I could... If you showed me a scene from one of them, I'm not sure I could tell you which movie it came from. Oh, I could totally do that just because there's a very different sort of color scheme and plus the different villains. And also just two is my absolute favorite. Like some of the sequences they've gotten to. Like that stealth shootout between Common and uh, Keanu Reeves to the Oculus to the uh, World Trade Center uh, subway station. That that was yeah. pretty awesome. I really can't remember it. I know I've I've seen all three. I went to the theater to see the third one. Yeah, see, the the, the third one was good, but that's kind of what has me worried about the franchise. Is it kind of felt like they're planning for more now, yeah. so they're piecemealing things, and they're kind of like it's it's like how the old Saw franchise used to run, where there'd be a lot of retconning each one, and by the time you got to like Jigsaw, there's like eight different uh, apprentices that we didn't know about. That were there since day one. Oh, boy. Uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. Okay, so you're hearing good things about nobody. What was the other one coming out this weekend? Bad Trip, which I haven't heard anything about yet. 
Okay, and that's uh... Eric Andre and Lil Ralph Howery go on a road trip, and Tiffany Haddish just broke out of prison to chase them. It's a prank movie like uh, Jackass and like Eric Andre's sort of shtick that he does on his show. It looks hysterical, uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to actually seeing it, but that I really haven't heard much about it. All they right. might be on an embargo where it's like tonight when it drops, they let people talk. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joining me. Let's jump over to the world of movie news. What was the big story this week, you think? Uh, well, uh, if you're a fan of Zack Snyder's Justice League, oh, here and we go. thought, well, <laughs> cool, we're going to actually get more movies out of that. We are? Uh, no. Oh. The Warner Brothers brass basically said, oh, yeah, he, he finished up his trilogy with, with Justice League, and, uh, you know, we're excited to do all these other movies that you didn't ask for. And it's like, but, you know, the, if you watched Zack Snyder's Justice League, you would understand that there's two more movies that are supposed to follow this. There's He's supposed to have a trilogy out of the Justice League, yeah. not a trilogy that ends with Justice League. It's like someone didn't read the memo. God, I feel like we've talked about everything there is to talk about with this movie since it's started coming around. But um, I don't know if I need I don't know. Like, I know there are people out there that were absolutely blown away by this movie. I, I, I wasn't to say that, uh, hey, there needs to be two more movies for me. It's like, OK, I, all right, let's go do it. And that's the, the worst thing about this is and I told you off the air the other day when we were talking that I like all of his characters. I think Ben Affleck is a great Batman. I think Henry Cavill is a great Superman. I think Gal Gadot is a great Wonder Woman. I think uh, uh, the one kid, Flash, eh, I can kind of take leave him. But, you know, the three main ones, I love their, I think they're great characters. I think they're great representations. Well, I was also just glad to see, like, as far as I'm concerned, Flash and Cyborg were the MVPs of, of Justice League, of Zack Snyder's Justice League, because we got so much more out of their stories and I enjoyed watching them unfold, especially Cyborg. Yeah. Because Ray Fisher got the short end of the stick with that movie. And we can kind of see, like, he, he, he just keeps get, he keeps engaging Warner Brothers because there's been this culture of abuse and, and misrepresentation and just general ickiness and horridness. Yeah. That, like, he was supposed to be in the new Cyborg movie, in the new Flash movie, and apparently he's been written out of it. And it, it, it was really nice to see his character actually get the full Frankenstein-esque story and seeing it unfold. And that emotional arc was fantastic. The stuff with the Flash works even better, too, because I went back and watched uh, Joss Whedon's two-hour Justice League. And just watching how the Flash is – the one scene where the Flash goes to see his dad, it is all, it is just rushed, and it starts, like, right in the middle. And instead of seeing him really talk to his dad and nail in that story beat, you get a gag where he draws a, a glasses and a mustache on a guy's face because he's the Flash. And gosh darn, he's so funny. You know what? <laughs> uh, there's part of me that it's like – I didn't – Maybe you know what? Maybe that's what it is with the Josh Whedon thing. Well, I just kind of thought of that. That maybe his, his folk because I was thinking about that. I wanted more Superman in the movie. Right. I wanted more. I want it kind of bummed me out that in a four hour movie, Superman doesn't show up until hour four or you know about three and a half four hours into it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, another thing people have to keep in mind is this is this is exactly another reason why I want to see the future films is. This is in the middle of a story. Yeah. You've got people saying, it's too dark. There's not this. There's not that. And it's like, yeah, well, this is a still developing story. Superman is still a, a young concept to our world. And this whole arc is aiming towards acceptance of metahumans. Superman kind of finding that balance in between, you know, Pa Kent and Jor-El's wisdom. And, like, these characters are still cooking. They're still developing. Yeah. To I judge everything at, at this point is kind of premature. The darkness stuff has never bothered me with the Whedon stuff. Or, uh, excuse me, with the Snyder that's, stuff. Well, that's part of the reason why I like him, because he does dark stuff like that so well. I'm still in love with Watchmen after all these years. You know, I mean, I, I like some of the stuff I don't agree with. It's like, okay, is it the sun that's giving him those powers? It's the atmosphere that's giving him his powers? Just pick one. The sun. Is he jumping or is he flying? Just pick one. He can do both. I guess. And the sun and our atmosphere affect him. I do like how Superman in these uses his heat vision more than anybody else. Yeah, and we got to see that frosty breath in uh, in Justice League. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so no more Snyderverse. For now. That's what I'm thinking. I'm, them saying no it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> no, because if the fans want it enough and there's enough of a call for it, I'm sure we'll get it. But... 
You know, it took three years to get Zack Snyder's Justice League. Who knows how long it'll take to get these other films. It could be interesting. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joining me on the line right now. There's some stuff about Black Widow, but I'm not overly crazy about the... I, I don't think it's breaking news. It's going to be, what, released this summer and on Disney+. Plus. Black Widow and uh, Cruella are both going to be have Disney Plus premiere options. Uh, Disney shuffled a whole bunch of release dates around. Black Widow is now premiering in July. Okay. I believe Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings goes to September, which is interesting because Eternals is supposed to come out in November, and Spider Man No Way Home is supposed to be out in February. But then on the 20th Century Fox side of things, uh, Free Guy is now in August, and Death in the Nile got pushed to next February. But what's interesting to note is there has been no news on where the, when the Bob's Burgers movies is going to come out. So maybe they're going to keep that as like a Hulu de- debut. There's a Bob's Burgers movie coming? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not I... a Bob's Burgers movie? No, I'm not. Ah, uh, okay. We'll just skip that then. Okay. I've told you that story. Yeah. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have. <laughs> so anyways, Mike Rage from CinemaBlit.com joining me. Uh, is there anything else going on that's kind of uh, notable this week, or is it kind of just a slow week? Pierce Brosnan's been cast in the, the, DC e, the DC universe that Warner Brothers is interested in continuing because he's now Dr. Fate in a, The Rock's Black Adam movie. Rock had something about Black Adam this week, didn't he? Well, he's been, I think he's sort of been teasing it because in, in addition to the cast announcements, they started building sets. And I think he's been working out for the movie, obviously. But didn't he have something on Instagram or something that called out like DC and Marvel and all that? Oh, you know, I do not know. Hey, by the way, have you seen his show, Young Rock? No, I haven't. It's actually not bad. Really? It's kind of interesting on how they kind of go through it and stuff. The way they set it up is uh, he's doing this big interview to because he's running for to be president. It's like set 10 years in the future. He's running for yeah. president, and they're interviewing about him, and it's like flashback scenes of him telling his story. Wow. Wow what? No, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my, oh. my official reaction. Well, I could tell you really give a shit about that one. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, go go rock. I mean, uh, we'll see if it lasts. Uh, I, 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 it's, it's just, it's kind of hard for me to get excited about it because it's another one of those things where it's like clearly the person who it's the story is based on is involved. Yeah. So there's always that risk of, well, you know, is this really the story or what are you hiding? And also, just I think the rock kind of overextends himself at times. I get that he is a busy man and like loves to dominate in entertainment and everything. And, you know, guy's got a tequila, water brand, uh, all this other stuff. But it's it's just hard for me to get excited about sitcoms without a real fun, without a fun hook. I get you. No, it's it's interesting. And the kid that plays like the young version of him and his dad and stuff, they're pretty good. But anyways, um, that's neither here nor there. Uh, I, it spot. I mean, I like <laughs> The Rock. They are doing something kind of cool, uh, and it's not movie-related, r- but it's TV. Uh, a- Did you see the thing A&E's doing? No, I haven't seen anything that A&E's been doing for the past decade. What are they doing? They're doing uh, profiles on WWE Legends. Oh! And it's starting in April. It's April 18th, I believe, and the first one out of the gate is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, wow. Wow. I, you would have thought they would have done someone that's like passed on first. They're doing kind all of live people. They did. They're doing Mick Foley. They're doing Shawn Michaels. They're doing um, who else? That was is it? really interesting. Bret Hart. Oh, oh, that's gonna be fun. Which how nobody's made a movie about the Montreal screw job yet is beyond me. Uh yeah, because I would watch that. I would totally watch like you do a two hour real time movie about Bret Hart. Right at the right at the event, and slowly everything unfolding and learning, like going right up to that moment. Oh, it'd be awesome! Uh, Stone Cold, here, here they are: Stone Cold, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, Macho Man Randy Savage, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, Ultimate Warrior, Mick Foley, Bret the Hitman Hart. You know, as someone who's not really a wrestling guy, the history fascinates me. The history and the personalities just really fascinate me in that organization. I'll tell you this. If, if you're interested in just kind of the history of it, uh, Jim Cornette's uh, podcast, The Corny Drive-Thru, is <laughs> he, he is 
he is a weird dude, but he has an unbelievable story to tell. He knows all the ins and outs of wrestling, and and it's really cool to listen to. Um, I'll trade you because I uh, I've mentioned Junk Food Cinema here before, right? Yes, fantastic podcast. Uh, two guys that run it: C. Robert Cargill, the co-writer of Doctor Strange, the movie, and yep. uh, Brian Salisbury, who's uh, also a film critic, and he has a pod. Brian Salisbury has a podcast with his brother called Repay Per View, a replay per view. And they're basically going through, I think, all of the WrestleManias or all the oh, special cool. events from the beginning, and they they alternate it so that way every other episode is a Patreon exclusive. But they've been going through like the uh, I think they're up to like the the late '90s, early 2000s era. And I need to start listening to this because uh, pay per views or WrestleManias. I think it's WrestleManias. It might be both. I'm not sure. I just know that it's it's their big wrestling project that they've done. They've been going back and watching like the huge specials because like the wrestling business is interesting, like throughout its whole history, you get up to the eighties, mid eighties into, especially when WrestleMania started coming out and when Vince McMahon started slowly tur- taking over, Yeah, it gets it. It gets crazy. It, it really does. But anyways, I think that wraps it up for this week, right? Dwayne Johnson, come on our show. There you go. All Not right, friends. Yet. Uh, Mike Reyes from cinemablend.com joins me every Friday on the show to talk about movies and other stuff. Uh, you can find him on social media at Mr. Controversy 83. Mike, <laughs> Have a good weekend. You too, man.